is still, I mean, not much has been done, is the area of safety, the space that we are working in. Uh, journalists are exposed to a lot of uh, trauma, mm -hmm. a lot of risky situations, whether it is a protest like we had yesterday. Anything could go wrong, anything could happen. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the journalists and the fact that, one, let's just talk even about their attire, just safety gear, that yeah, one yes, would, yes. it's still not happening. Eric, where... Mm -hmm. You know, the buck stops with the employer because it's the employer that is opposed actually to giving this gear when uh, uh, their workers are going out there who are journalists. But uh, uh, yesterday we are just looking at a study and the, the study shows that in Kenya, employers have not taken that uh, seriously, whereby they are able to protect their workers when they are going out there. And employers in Kenya, especially the media houses, they do not take, um, they do not provide some of the essentials that journalists need when they are going to cover uh, hostile environments like what you're talking about, the demos that we had yesterday, if you look at some of them who are in t-shirts mm -hmm. and you are going to an area whereby there no are bullets will even with, yes, without any protection. So the employers actually have done nothing in Kenya in terms of uh, protecting journalists who are going out there. If the civil society and the, and the union and other organizations within the media that actually are concerned with the safety of journalists more than the employers who actually are benefiting from the services that are being offered by these journalists to their media houses. So the employers actually have scored very poorly in, when it comes to the safety and the protection of the journalists when they go out there to do their work. Is the Union of Journalists doing anything about that? Because we've talked about it, we've highlighted it, but if nothing is being done, we still continue to bear that risk. Yes, for us, we've taken it as our own responsibility and uh, we've also taken it also with other employers where we negotiate with them and I think it is a close. I know there are two media houses, including Standard Group, that actually has undertaken to offer protective uh, services to their journalists when they are on duty. Mm. Yes. And also the rules and regulation that surround it. I remember one of our reporters, uh, Duncan Haim, but one time was arrested because of the gear that he had and the question was, where did he get it from? But uh, maybe Victor also just making sure that once we get the gear that it is not again going to become a point of uh, being harassed thank you uh, if you look at uh, if you look at the un action plan on safety and protection of journalists which is a, a global uh, approach to safety of protection it talks about three p's the prevention pro prosecution and and uh, protection. Now, uh, largely, uh, as a regulator, for example, Media Council, we have taken the prevention approach uh, more focused, and that's why we are involving ourselves so much in policy review, on issues of training of journalists, because we also believe safety starts with journalists. That, 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 that some, some of these uh, things need, as, as we put pressure, and, and, and Eric is doing it through the union, on employers to do what the labor law, because these are occupational health issues, Correct. Uh, that they must provide minimum uh, things for their journalists. But, but look at it, Mike, also. H how much is a bulletproof jacket, for example, in terms of price? How much is it? I mean, so, so that if uh, I know Standard will, uh, can manage half, Royal Media, Nation, uh, but out of these, the 100 and other small media houses, media can houses they even there. afford mm -hmm. uh, a bulletproof jacket, for example? I mean, those are issues. Then two, given our country, because the law says that once you import, you must get clearance, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, from uh, the relevant uh, interior, you buy, you don't keep them. After use, you surrender for, 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 for safe custody. And, 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 and it's also a reaction to what has been happening. So that's why I was talking about that we, as we balance and push for protective gear, for bulletproof, or what, but more also needs to be done on the part of journalists on self-awareness, mm -hmm. that, that how safe... I mean, that's called uh, risk analysis, that right. as you go to an event, have you done just quick an risk analysis to establish that I'm safe? Mm. Because as we have seen, employers will abandon you once you get into trouble many times. We have a, a number of journalists like in Abbasi Law Court who are global in line of duty. They go to hospitals, they are abandoned there by media houses, mm. and yeah. we have to come in. With and, and what you're saying now speaks a lot to uh, the training, and uh, training that needs also to be continuous, because majority of what happens is that you'll have training that is done in universities and colleges, but once you're employed, then it's just literally, it's a rat race. Where 